After weeks of testing, I've made a really difficult decision. It's time to say goodbye to my Instant Pot Duo Crisp with the ultimate lid. So let me tell you why. So I got my first Instant Pot in 2016. So that was the Instant Pot Duo and it really was a game changer for me. I just loved it. So when the Duo Crisp came out with the air fryer lid, I snapped one up as soon as it came to the UK, which was I think in 2020. And it's helped me do all kinds of batch cooking. If I've been feeling unwell, I can just put something on, go and lie down, set and forget, and know that the Instant Pot is keeping things things warm for me. It's helped me get things ready for freezing. So I've loved this thing. But the one thing that I detest is that the air fryer lid changeover on the Duo Crisp is not easy. It's a big heavy thing and it means that you need a lot of storage for the Duo Crisp. Mine's an 8 litre so it's particularly big. Even now I have trouble getting that lid onto its protective cover. But despite it all, we've stayed together. So when I saw the Instant Pot were bringing out a new model of the Crisp with this hinged lid, I was really excited. So I got this model cheap in the Black Friday sales and I've been testing it since the end of November until now, the 23rd of February. So I've given it a good old testing. I've loved using it, but our relationship has got a little bit rocky. But let me tell you first about all the things it does well. So firstly, I really do love this hinged lid. I love not having two lids. Everything's just compact. So I don't need extra room in the cupboards. This can just sit on the countertop. Very neat. And of course, you've got the pressure cooker, all those other functions and the air fryer. And the thing that I was worried about in terms of swapping over between the two lids has been absolutely fine. And that's super important if you're like me and you have some problems with your hands, chronic pain or some mobility issues. Uh, hulking around that big lid is a challenge. Um, this sort of lid is much easier, but the fact that it is an integrated lid does raise some problems. I'll talk about those later. All of the kinds of recipes that I like doing where I swap over from pressure cooking and then want to give a final bit of air frying for crisping up chicken skin or something like that, I can do with this. And where the Ultimate, I think, has a real advantage over the Instant Pot Duo Crisp is when it comes to air frying. This is a lower bowl in here and it has a wider and less deep insert and that means you can put much more food in there without stacking it up. And also this is a bit more robust than the one I've got in my Instant Pot Duo Crisp. It will never be as good as having a dedicated air fryer. It's very rare for multifunction appliances to be able to do everything well and my experience so far at least is if you do do air frying, a dedicated air fryer, preferably with the drawer style, is definitely better. But this is a good second best and it's definitely better than my instant pot duo crisp in my opinion anyway. And then the other thing that I think is a great improvement in this model is the yogurt making function. So you can make yogurt in the Instant Pot Duo Crisp, but it's just not a yogurt function, but it's perfectly easy to do. And I give you the settings and temperatures and stuff on how to do it in the video that'll be showing somewhere here right now. Um, but on this model, it has an automatic yogurt function. And in this case, the yogurt function actually scalds the milk and then carries on going and alerts you when the temperatures dropped enough to put in your yogurt. They both make great yogurt. It's just a little bit more automatic in the ultimate. One of the other things that's a real design improvement is the water overflow. So this is the back and the water overflow is much more robust than it is on the other models I've had. It needs to be because it gets more water in there but nonetheless I really like it. You can just reach behind and pull it out. Very easy to put back in again. Really good feature. And then there are lots of other good things about the device, but the final one for the way I cook is that I find sauteing in this pot much easier. It's nice and wide and you've got really good visibility and you're not having to lean over and stir and make sure that everything's sauteing evenly. And it's got more settings so you can control how hot the sauteing is. I think it's one to six. So a lot more variety in the temperature settings, whereas on the Instant Pot Duo Crisp, it's kind of high and low. Low is quite low and high is very high so I'm often swapping between the two. So let me tell you some of the things that I don't like so much about this model and then I'll tell you about the final straw that's made me come to this decision to go back to the shop and hope they'll take it back. 
Number one is accessories. There are very few accessories with this part. All I got with the Ultimate was the air fryer basket. Um, then it's got this little gadget on the bottom, a little bit like with a crisp. And I know I've heard people say they use this as a trivet. I just don't think it's good enough as a trivet. So that's it on the accessory department. You don't get as much stuff, which is not very inspiring when it comes to getting you cooking and trying out dehydrating and stuff. So my Instant Pot Duo Crisp came with this dehydrating or grilling broiling tray that fits inside the air fryer. It's a terrible design to get in and out. So I have my own little device for getting this out. And I'll link to that below in case you haven't seen it. My Instant Pot Duo Crisp also came with this brilliant trivet. And I use this for kind of putting a chicken on and lowering down into the basket and kind of lifting out again. You can also turn it upside down. It's got rigid legs, so it will act as a trivet and you can put food on top so it's nearer for grilling or broiling. And then I've also got a glass lid and I love putting the glass lid on. If I've got some, some kind of gluggy food where I'm getting the water off and I don't want it kind of spitting out, also use that for slow cooking sometimes. And then you can buy spare seals and swap the seals over. I do a lot of spicy food kind of cooking. So if I'm gonna make a dessert, which I don't do very often because I'm rubbish at it, I've got a separate one of these so that it doesn't end up smelling of curry if I'm making a panna cotta or something. So my experience of any pressure cooker is that over time you do need to replace rubber seals. So I don't know what the answer to this is. I don't know why this would be any different, but it does worry me because if this fixed seal wears out there isn't a way of replacing it as it stands and that makes me nervous and then because I use my instant pot all the time daily I have got two inner pots and this means I'm not having to wash up all the time I've got two pots on the go one can go in the dishwasher and there's always one sitting there in the instant pot so it's ready to go but there are many accessories for the duo crisp you can replace this kind of flimsy air fryer basket when you need to you can get replacements for other parts for it and then if you're like me and you're coming over from one of the other instant pots, I found that my trusty pot in pot trivet and bowl are just too tall for this shallower model. So that shallow bowl is great for frying, nice open surface. But when it comes to pot in pot, my dishes were just too close to the lid. So it's not the end of the world. And I did manage to get some shallower bowls that I can use in the Ultimate, but it just meant I was buying extra stuff, which maybe it's me, but I just hadn't really thought about. Then the other difference with pressure cooking, which isn't a major problem, but mostly on instant pots, we have pressure cook high, pressure cook low. And most things you cook on pressure cook high, so you just use pressure cook in this model. But for some more sensitive foods, and particularly for me, I like boiling eggs in the instant pot, then I want to use a lower pressure for that, or the whites go really quite rubbery. So on this model, it's about using the steam setting for that. So just to be aware of it. The other different thing about this, is that the steam settings are automated. So normally we click the button to let the pressure out of a pressure cooker or we let it do a natural release and we just leave it to gradually kind of work its way out. Um, but on this model here, there are three automated settings for steam release. So there's either quick release, and we press a button and put it onto quick release, or we can put it on natural pressure release, which acts in the same way as with the other models. Or there's a third one, which is called pulse release. It is quite fun, the pulse release. There it goes. I think some of you might really like this because it means you're not putting your hand near where you release the steam, but I don't think it works as well. So the thing that you normally see on a pressure cooker here where the steam comes out is actually inside the lid. So you can't see it. Get this back on and the steam comes out of the top here quite slowly. So that might be good in that there's not like a steam all over the kitchen, but I found it to be very slow. So if I am cooking something delicate like eggs where I really need a quick release, it's just taken too long. So on its own, that wouldn't be a deal breaker at all, that sometimes I have to rethink my recipes and I'm having to retest things, which I could do without, to be honest. And then one of the other things I've found is that the inner lid seems to get kind of splattered by food when I do my release, much more than it does on other models. And I'm needing to really make sure I've cleaned it out so that the steam mechanism doesn't get blocked. So for me, it's requiring more maintenance and cleaning than my instant pot 
Hot Duo Crisp. And I'm guessing that's because the lid is so much closer to the food. So all of these things get a little bit irritating, but mostly I could find my way around it. And because I love the hinge lid so much, I was willing to work with all of those difficulties. But something more major happened that I was worried about from the beginning and is why I'm going to be returning this Instant Pot as soon as I've got this video done. So I know a lot of other Instant Potters and I'd heard that some people had had problems. The first thing I'd heard about and I was watching out for is to do again with the lid. Some people have had this little plastic tab, which is how you insert the lid and get it attached, that it has snapped off. This is not what happened to me, but it's definitely an issue for some people, so be aware of it. What happened to me was the second fault that I'd seen a lot of people talking about, and that is a jam. Oh, no. So I was cooking a shepherd's pie base in here, so I had some leftover lamb, tomato base. So while I was cooking the shepherd's pie mix, I thought I'll time the quick release and then I'll time a similar dish in the Instant Pot Duo crisp and see how different it really is or is it just my mind playing tricks so I actually had my iPhone on watching the instant pot control dial waiting for the quick release and the quick release happened but guess what the lid didn't release even though I'd seen the steam come out and I heard the click that you can hear when you know that you're about to get a message saying you can release the lid that message never came and the lid was completely jammed and my food was stuck in there. I went through all kinds of troubleshooting steps. It took six hours before I could get the food out and this was a turning point for me. And this is a central part of my kitchen and I need to feel trust in my Instant Pot. And I'm really sad about it because I really did love this device but I can't have it here if I'm worrying all the time that things are gonna get stuck. And it's back to my old faithful Instant Pot Duo Crisp for me. So I hope this helps you work out if the ultimate lid is for you and if you're now thinking you might go in the direction of the Instant Pot Duo Crisp you can see the UK version in this video here and I'll see you over there.